Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we bring you a new one from Keychron, the Keychron V3 Max. Now I have the Keychron V3. I was actually one of the first reviewers to do um, the video on the V3 as well as the C3 Pro. Um, as soon as I saw that they were released, I purchased it. Um, some of them went out of sale or went out of stock before I was able to pick them up. But I have just received this one now. I ordered this on Tuesday and today is Friday. So despite it being $15 in shipping, which seems like a lot, it was sent to DHL and arrived here in days from China. So kind of hard to complain about the uh, shipping time. Anyway, Keychron is known for delivering some great keyboards at a great price, uh, very few reports of issues, and Keychron, I know from experience, has great customer service. They take care of any issues, especially when you buy directly for, from them. Um, these products first show up uh, on Keychron, though some of them, and it's a practice I really just dislike, uh, they make the keyboard, but first before even releasing it on their store they release it as a kickstarter which i'm sorry but kickstarters are crowdsourcing to help new products come to market and unestablished companies to be able to make a footprint and show off what they're able to make or you know if they're able to make it uh i believe keychron is only using kickstarter as a fomo to get people on the fear of missing out so that they pay ahead of time and then they just add it to the store, usually at the same price. So that's the buying model. And I don't really like to get into those conversations because it's, it gets heated. So many people have so many different uh, opinions about how things should be done. But I just stand by the simple fact that if you're a company and you're established, you need to sell your product as in stock. Plenty of other companies sell you know, more bespoke items or different colors with different options and everything like that. And they don't need people to purchase them ahead of time and wait for three, six, 12, 18 months before they receive it. That's he neither here nor there. Keychron's keyboards for the last, I want to say at least two years, have all had QMK and VIA available right out of the box. QMK source is always published and available before the keyboard is released. Um, they, they even include the DXF or basically the 3D file for either CNCing or 3D printing your own plate and whatever material you want, which not a lot of companies do. Monsky has started to do it and hopefully other companies will follow suit. But today we're taking a look at the V3 Max. This is a gasket mounted version of the V3. So just for a quick comparison before we get into this one, this is the Keychron C3 Pro. Um, now this is a soldered keyboard, but, and it's only available on Amazon, but it's 36 bucks. I've seen it on sale for 29. So it's got soldered switches, but it has um, a PC plate and is gasket mounted. And again, is uh, unfortunately it's soldered, but I'm probably gonna come into this one soon enough and add some Milmac sockets. Now, obviously this one has shine through keycaps. Um, you basically, you buy it, you get it for $36 for a TKL that's open source. It's really hard to beat that price, honestly. And this one is the Keychron V3, not the Max. Um, it is a nice keyboard. I did buy this one bare bone with the knob. The V3 Max only seems to have the knob option available, uh, but I went ahead and bought it with the switches and the keycaps because they have the banana switch, which is a new switch that I haven't gotten to try. So it's $20 difference with the keycaps and the switches. So it's kind of an easy buy because there's not many places you're going to get a set of keycaps that have the Windows and the Mac. Um, usually they have like one or two extras, as well as switches for 20 bucks. Um, so I wanted to try out the switches and we went ahead out and 
got it um, pre-built. But just to show off the comparisons, now I'm not exactly sure what plate this is on here. I just kind of, I saw it and I ordered it because last time I hesitated, then it was out of stock. So in this one, I've got some Akko greens in here, but it does have a steel plate. Uh, now this can be modded. I haven't modded this one yet, but out of the box, it doesn't sound bad at all, despite it having a steel plate. As long as you put lube switches in there, you're really not going to have that much of an issue. Though I'm not sure, oh no, wait. I know for the Keychron B, uh, C3 Pro, I do not believe I've seen plate files for that because since it's hot, it's not hot swap, I think they just expect people not to desolder it. So, but there is plate files for this one at one point, or at some point in the future, I do plan to actually take the file, modify it, do a 3D print and flip it out and see, you know, how much difference we can add, despite this being a tray mount. So there's no flex whatsoever. But this one here, this one is a uh, gasket mounted. I, and I do believe it has a PC plate, but Oh, this one is wireless as well. I was not aware of that. So uh, this one was um, 74, no, it was 74 bare bone, 94 with switches in the keycaps, plus another 15 for shipping and handling. Um, but again, like I said, shipping got here quick, so I can't really complain. But first things first, I'm gonna take off this plastic because well, that glare, huh? So let's go ahead and open this up and see what we got. Now, first things first, we've got a quick start guide. Uh, I believe Keychron was the first keyboard company that started doing this, including a card that has a handy dandy guide to all of the functionalities that it has built in. It usually, it, usually when they release this via, they're already in the via database, so you won't have to do um, the loading of a JSON file, though that may not be the case, this one, because it was just released. Sometimes it does take a little while for VIA to update their database, but we will find out here shortly. Um, gives you the uh, backlight brightness, decrease the brightness, Mac and Windows. Oh, it looks like it actually has a physical switch. I think most key crons do. So let's go ahead and we have a nice foam layer here. Now we have been including user manuals, which is always very nice. There's a lot of people that don't understand QMK and VIA, so they they kind of find themselves in a bit of conundrum. I have been planning to do a VIA a tutorial video. I've done little pieces of VIA to help for specific keyboards, but I've been asked plenty of times to do something that's a little bit more comprehensive in VIA, and then another video that's comprehensive in QMK. Now, QMK is probably going to be a little bit more technical, as it does require you to if not know, see, at least understand some programming languages, though for the most part, you can copy and paste a lot of stuff. So I'm gonna see how, how well I can kind of summarize QMK and make it more palatable and enable more people to understand how it works and why open source firmware is better. Uh, just one example, I just got a question from somebody asking about that they work in a secure environment and they want to be able to program their keyboard you know from the key from the actual keyboard because they can't use software that's not approved so my advice to them is to get a qmk via keyboard because you could just go to use via.app in any chrome based web browser that has the uh, the usb um usb hid enabled so that it can actually speak to the USB port and you can program it from there. So, and everything, like if you want to get into the QMK source, you could do that at home, upload your firmware, and say if you have different patterns of lights already set up, you can use different key combinations to get um, those lights set up. Now, that's one thing that most folks don't understand. VIA allows one to add keys to change between the RGB, uh, the RGB effects, and also to change between the colors, the hue, uh, the saturation, so they can reach the right color. But VIA does not have an interface for per key RGB. If the MCU does have enough memory to store the colors for per key RGB, you'd have to set up basically 
all intents and purposes methods inside of QMK that would have that key map with those lights already, you know, what color light to what key. And then you'd be able to switch, you know, map either map in any key and pass the exact QMK key code down into the firmware and then it'll set the key colors for you. So that's something that I look forward to coming to in a future video. So keep an eye out for that. And if you don't want to miss it, I hate doing this, but hitting like, hitting subscribe down below really does help me when it comes to the YouTube algorithm. I'm not trying to be the biggest, but I would like to be able to have a wider reach. Um, I don't make commercials. I do informational. I like to share my thoughts, my opinions, and why I have those opinions on particular keyboards, because sometimes there are keyboards that are well-priced and they pack a punch, but then there's keyboards that are twice as much and don't even have half the features of the keyboard, half the price. So unfortunately, because there's so much deviations within the market, I think sometimes it's good just to have a a voice that's not pushed by commercialization. I, I am semi-retired. I don't do this to make money. Um, heck, the few keyboards I do buy, YouTube doesn't even cover the cost of that. So that's not my concern here. I honestly just want to help people to understand mechanical keyboards better, either whether they're starting out or they've been doing it for quite some time tips, tricks, and to get a good idea of what the keyboard may offer if they're interested in it. Because there's been plenty of keyboards I've seen and I'm like, yeah, it's going to be nice. And I get it in hand and I'm like, oh, this, why they do this, 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 this. And they're asking twice as much as another keyboard that does everything that they're kind of not saying in the specs, but they're kind of giving the impression that this keyboard will do it and then it doesn't. And it's like, and then it sounds awful and it's like a keyboard that has the features of one from 2019 and they're trying to sell it at 2019 prices like they developed it in 2019 but they did, didn't just release it until 2024 so i hope to be that if there's anything at all any questions that you've got um i prefer that the questions be at least somewhat related to the video at hand but i am always in budget keeps over on reddit and we also have a Discord at discord.budgetkeebs.com. You can go to budgetkeebs.com. It'll take you straight to our subreddit where we have a weekly thread for questions where you can go in, throw in your question. Either myself or several other people will be answering that question. The more information you provide, the better answer you're going to receive. So if you do need some help, I mean, feel free to put a comment down below, especially if it has to do with the topic at hand. It's much easier for me to get to, but regardless, I do my best to respond to every single comment because I like to start conversations. I like to help people out. I like solving things. I mean, this morning, someone got a GMK 81, the one with the screen. And they're like, when I first got it, it was the screen was all right. But after I put in switches and, you know, did some tinkering around, the screen doesn't come on. The keyboard's still working, but the screen doesn't come on. And I mean, it was simple, but I was like, have you checked the cable, the ribbon cable to make sure that it's still attached between the screen and the PCB? And sure enough, it turned out to be that. Um, again, another one with the GMK series is being in Mac mode when you switches on Windows. Well, the fix is going from Mac, from Windows to Mac and then back to Windows again. And then all the keys are fine as far as the function keys and the um, alt and windows keys. So uh, they always include this card. I find it funny, but it's very important. Um, you want to make sure that those pins are per perpendicular to the base and parallel to each other so that you're putting them in straight. You should not have to use too much force to go in there. Using too much force runs the risk of pushing out the hot swap socket, which is really only connected with a little bit of solder and solder is very low grade welding, it, but it's not really welding, it's just making a connection. So it doesn't really have any strength or support to keep things holding in place. I really would like to see a new hot swap design socket, but we can get into that in another video. So as I said, we have, oh, we have some extra screws, looks like for the plate as well as for the case, which is always nice, and the tools 
does that apply to them? We have some extra keys, like the enter, a lock, the windows key, because by default, they have the Mac keys loaded up. Keychron first started out really just making keyboards for Mac that, you know, were as feature rich or more than a Macintosh keyboard, but would work just fine. Uh, with Macintosh, and they've done that. Um, there was an issue back in the day, doesn't happen anymore with their QMK version of the firmware that Linux would recognize it as a Mac keyboard, and you just had to, the, the, there was a fix that you could do, but now it's not an issue anymore, at least not one that I've experienced. We also have a USB-C to USB-A adapter, female on both ends, and we have a nicely braided USB-C to USB-C cable with a USB-C to USB-A adapter. And of course we have the Keychron branded wire switch and keycap puller. And here we are with the Keychron V3 Max. So we do have a gasket mount as we can see right here. And just to double check, it does look like we have um, it is a polycarbonate plate, which is going to be a plate that will offer deeper tones if properly configured. But this keyboard sounds really nice right off the bat. Now, does it have, it does have a PET layer. It doesn't have IXPE, it just only has the PET. So that's quite interesting. And here are the banana switches, which are actually a pretty nice medium tactile. They could use some lubing, but there's not really that much ping in there. I think it's primarily the um, leaf spring, but it has a um, kind of a heavier bump at the top and then it just drops off. So it's more like a capital P type tactile. But I got to say, I, off the bat, I like them. Um, and these are manufactured by Gatoron. So we have a south facing PCB with a PET layer. Um, there's some foam in between the plate and the PCB as well as some foam below. Now I went ahead and got the keycaps. I'm not the biggest fan of these keycaps. They may have improved them, but the first time, first two keychrons that I bought with keycaps, um, the keycap stems broke on them. It's the only keycap set I've ever had, and that includes double shot keycaps. Oh, except for one that came on one keyboard, but it was like you could literally squeeze the keycaps with your fingers. I think it was like 0.6 or 0.7 millimeters in thickness, but they were PC, so they were completely clear, and a stem did break on that. But besides that one, the only keyboards that I've had that came keyboard or just keycap sense, the only ones that ever had a stem break on them were the keychrons besides that one unit though I think they have improved it. I haven't bought their um, their keycaps in a while, primarily because of that. And primarily because, I mean, don't get me wrong, the color is okay, but it's just, I don't know, it's not my bag. OSA is all right. I'm usually okay with SA profiles, but this one's like an, more like a sculpted OEM and it's not quite as tall. It, it's, it's almost uniform going across. I mean, it is sculpted, but it's just, I mean, I can type on it, don't get me wrong, but I prefer to either go down to a Cherry or up to a full SA or MT3. So looking at the keyboard right off the bat, we have, yes, I don't agree that this is the best spot for a knob. I would have preferred to see it here, but I have gotten used to on my V3, um, and I also have the uh, Q3, so I have, <laughs> A few of the TKLs, like I said, TKL is really one of my favorite layouts, though when I use TKLs, I use a numpad. One of, Another interesting thing about this keyboard that I did catch on looking at it is that we have not just one USB-C, but two USB-A controllers or dongles. Now, Usually, Keychron keyboards are Bluetooth and USB. But what it appears to be in this situation, and I just want to confirm before, this keyboard does have 
I don't know if this is the first one, but this this is the first one I have bought that has 2.4 as well as Bluetooth. So there's probably going to be a little bit more learning to that. And I wonder how the dual dongles work. And I wonder if you can actually have, like, say, hook one up to your laptop and the other one up to your desktop. I don't know if that's possible, but uh, the USB-C one, it's completely smooth and which makes it a little bit harder to pull out, but not really that well. I guess I shouldn't speak. I mean, you have to kind of get a grip on it, whereas this one has a ledge, so it's easier to just pull on out of there. I don't know why they didn't add that little ledge to this, but it's not the easiest. Over on this side, we see that we have the USB-C cable. Um, I don't know if that's a light or if that's a... I've never seen reset buttons on the side, so I'm curious. And once I open it up, we'll take a look at it. It's automatically set to Mac. I'm going to go ahead and set this over to Windows. And then it does have cable, Bluetooth, and 2.4 mode. That PET layer definitely makes a difference. So another good thing about um, these series is that they do come already installed with some PCB mounted stabilizers and I haven't had any problem. I've not needed to tune any Keychron stabilizers, so I don't know what magic they're doing to it. I really wish they would sell their screw and stabilizers as you know, just a product because I wouldn't mind using these on some other keyboards. They're just, they're well made. I mean, they have been making mechanical keyboards for a little bit longer than everybody else. So they, um, they do know how to get that right. They always seem to get the lubrication on the stabilizers just right. Not too much, not too little, but just enough for it to work as expected. quite a good amount of flex on this thing i gotta say and by far i can honestly say out of the let's say maybe 11 uh, this might be my 12th keychron keyboard this is the best sounding keyboard out of the box that i've received from keychron um, and that includes the q series so they've de definitely taken a lot from They've been learning and applying it to their new products. Um, having a QMK keyboard already fully loaded, ready to go for a lot of people, this is going to be more than enough. They're not gonna need to touch it. They're not gonna need to mod it. They're gonna be happy. Um, they might wanna try different switches, but there's different switches available at checkout. And there are these new switches that I believe are a Keychron exclusive from Gatoron. Again, we do have the uh, option and command buttons here. We're gonna go ahead and just switch these out even though we're not going to Windows. <laughs> we're going to, we're on Linux right now. So uh, we'll go ahead and just put the Windows and the Alt keys in there so that we don't get confused, right? <laughs> As I just received this, I am going to spend a little bit more time with it. I wanted to go ahead and just get an initial impressions video out there and I'll come back to do a deeper review, open it up, see what it's you know got on the inside and possibly even at that time start modding it though like i said it doesn't really seem to need much mods at all but i think maybe do a tempest tape layer mod on it perhaps even put an ip or a pe foam sheet above it and see if that brings a little bit more life to this um, then we'll try some different switches some different keycaps and see what we can get but I gotta say at this price, there is hardly any other keyboard that's gonna compete with this. And I mean, I mean that honestly, I, Keychron doesn't send me keyboards for free. I've always been honest about their keyboards and I pretty much have always found them to be of good quality. Um, I have my little niggles here and there, but overall I can recommend a Keychron and feel comfortable in recommending it because I think that most people are going to be very satisfied with the end product. So um, this is an investment I make because not only do I want it, because 
I'm a bit of a keyboard nerd, but also because I know that I'm going to get quality and we're going to have something that works well. Real quick though, before we get into any sound test or anything, let's see what these lights look like. Wow, those are pretty bright. Um, I know I have the lights turned up pretty bright in here, but these uh, LEDs, south facing LEDs are quite nice. We have the actual button that's bound. I mean, who uses scroll lock for real? I don't even use scroll lock. So we can um, cycle through the different um, RGB effects. And once we get on a solid color, we'd be able to switch the colors. One more thing I wanted to check though real quick is if we have this already in the Via. All right, shows up, connect. It's not in Via yet. So, yeah, okay. They actually say it on the page. Since the Via code for the V3 Max is still awaiting approval from GitHub, it is not yet automatically recognized. All right, so like with other uh, keyboards that are not yet in the Via database or will never be in there, you have to go and download the file from the product page. You just scroll down, it says use Via, it'll download the zip file. You have to extract the JSON file that's in there. That's the file that you're going to want to load up. Do not enable V2 because this is a V3. Then drag and drop or search for it. Load the file up, reauthorize the device, and then you'll see it there. For those unfamiliar or just getting started with Vian, the way that a lot of keyboards handle the Windows in the Mac mode are through different layers. By default, Keychron's first two layers are going to be, the zero and one layer are gonna be, zero is the Mac layer, one is the function layer for Mac. For Windows, two is the base layer, three is going to be the function layer for Windows. So, so that you guys are aware about that. Um, there is the, you can select the RGB effects, but again, you know, to uh, cycle through the different effects, this will actually toggle the RGB on and off and you can toggle through the effects and you can, you know, modify it to your heart's content. Um, and of course it's because it's QMK via, you can do tap and tap is basically hitting a key more than once and getting it to do a different functionality. Anyway, I've got to say, I'm, I am pleased, but I kind of expected to be. I didn't read too much about it. I more just skimmed through the pictures, placed the order, got it here in the same week. Um, glad to be able to be one of the first to do a quick overview of it. But like I said, I will be coming back to this. I want to open it up, see what's inside of it, see what makes it tick, and see if we can make it even sound better by switching out some of the keycaps, maybe the switches, who knows. Though I do want to do a deeper dive into the, um, the switches. Just the specs. Today we are taking a look at the Keychron V3 Max. This is a three mode TKL that comes with a gasket mounted PC plate as well as two 2.4 gigahertz dongles. One is USB-C and one is USB-A. It also is available with your choice of switches from the Jupiter Banana, the Jupiter Red or the Jupiter Brown as well as OSA double top shot keycaps. It does come well dampened and includes a PET sheet above the PCB. This keyboard comes weighing in 905 grams with a battery of 4,000 milliamp hours. The chin of this keyboard sits at 24 millimeters while the base sits at 33, providing for a typing angle of five degrees. Raising the included set of feet will raise the back up to 41 millimeters, changing your angle of typing to nine degrees. Using the final set of flip out feet will take the back up to 47 millimeters from your typing surface and change your angle of typing to 11 degrees. This keyboard MSRPs for $74 bare bone and $94 loaded with switches and keycaps. Um, you can see though, they have added the legends here the four is for 2.4 and the Bluetooth is the three different Bluetooth device slots. I'm also going to want to see if I can pair each of the 2.4 dongles to a different device. I'm going to see if that's possible or if it's just going to screw things up. If it's possible, this would be the first keyboard that has dual 2.4. I mean, obviously you may not, you're not going to be able to use it at the same time, but I don't think it'll work, but why not try it? 
Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the Keychron V3 Max that has just been released by Keychron this week. If you guys have any questions or comments or anything that you'd like for me to check when I do open it up and get in there, please leave me a comment down below. I do my best to answer all comments within a reasonable amount of time, although sometimes I am offline. I'm not always connected, as some people might think when they send me a message at 3 in the morning and say that they need an answer in the next five minutes like sorry bud i was sleeping anyway hope you enjoy the sound test and until the next transmission keep calm and keyboard on <laughs>